on and I'll have you take your uh, oxygen mask off, hang it on the hose in front of you, and when you do that, then I want you to go ahead and uh, we'll begin a demonstration, and that will be your, where your five minutes starts. So everybody on Victor's side, Victor's side only. Three, two, one, mask off. Take the mask off, hang out in the hose in front of you. Now, I don't want you to get started on that worksheet right away and get excited about it. I want you to look across at the person who's observing you so they can see what normal looks like, because later on they may see what Abby normal looks like. I want you to look at their name tag above their head. See how it is to try to read their name, especially their last name, which may be a little bit smaller and harder to focus on. It may not be a problem right now, but as time goes on and you uh, become a little hypoxic, it may be difficult to focus from near to far and back again. Look at those color charts. Do you notice how they look right now? Occasionally, maybe take a look at those and see how those are being uh, affected or how those are affecting your, uh, your visual acuity or color perception. And if you want to at this point, you can go ahead and uh, head down to the worksheet and begin working on some portion of it that you would like, whether it's the math problems, the crossword puzzle, the maze. Oh, and in fact, we are at the one minute point. So what I'd like you to do is I want you to go down to item number four to the first column, and I want you to put a check mark next to any symptom of hypoxia you're feeling. Write your pulse oximeter reading at the bottom of that column. Show it to the person across from you who's observing you, and then check out your visual target you chose earlier. See how your eyes are being affected, or if they're being affected. Remember, hypoxia is not necessarily going to be something you feel. It could be something you notice visually uh, that might indicate to you that there's a problem. Now, of course, for the folks on... Not the worksheet, guys. Show them your pulse oximeter. Yeah, show them your pulse oximeter when, you, when I ask them to show that. Yeah, they, they want to really see what your oxygen saturation is. Now, Bob side, you guys are looking for those signs of hypoxia, the breathing rate change, the coloration of the skin change. Maybe you're looking at the person getting a little goofy, get a big grin on their face, getting real serious. Whatever you see that indicates to you they're hypoxic, I want you to write it down as you see it. And with that, we are coming into the two-minute point. So, uh, Victor side, go down to item number four, the second column. And I want you to put an X or check mark next to the symptoms of hypoxia that you're currently feeling. Even if you put it in the first column and you want to put it again because you feel it, put it on there. Write your pulse oximeter reading at the bottom of that column. And then show your pulse oximeter to the person across from you. And check out your vision. See how your visual acuity is being affected or color perception at this point. Victor, show of fingers, how many symptoms have you got right now? Two. Okay, good. Uh, Connor, how many symptoms have you got? Two. Uh, Alex, how many symptoms have you got? Four. All right. Elbert, you were there. Uh, Derek, how many symptoms? Two. Andre? Two and Dave. Five. Okay, we're going for over the uh, over the top here. All right. So again, the goal is to recognize hypoxia and treat for it. Uh, Don and Jr. will put your mask on for you if they have to, but they prefer not to because you won't have them in the airplane to save your bacon later on. So good idea for you to be able to do it on your own. All right. And with that, we've been, uh, or should I say, you've been off auction for three minutes. And so what I'd like you to do right now is go down to uh, item number four, to the center column. I want you to put your pulse oximeter reading at the bottom of that column. Put a check mark next to any symptom of hypoxia that you're currently feeling. Show that pulse oximeter to the person across from you and check out your vision. See, it's, it's uh, being affected for you. How's Dave doing down there, JR? Dave's at about 64. 64. Dave, are you a pilot? You good, you good with math skills? Math skills. Math skills. Okay, Dave, can you do me a favor? Not, uh, Dave. Is she still there? Can you count backwards from 100 by 3 so JR can hear you? Like 100? He said no. <laughs> no? Okay, you want to try fives? Can you do that one? You don't have to put your mask on. Yeah, He's you want to put your mask on? That might yeah, be a good yeah, idea. There we go. <laughs> All right, good job. Alex is like on. Alex is going on. Good job. And remember, when you put your mask on, you want to slow your breathing rate right down so you don't hyperventilate. Take nice, slow, easy breaths. If you need to push the white switch up temporarily, you can do that. And with that, we are at the four-minute point. So those people on Victor's side who are off oxygen right now, I want you to go ahead and uh, head down to item four, four-minute column. Put a check mark next to whatever symptoms you're feeling. Write your uh, pulse ox reading down at the bottom of the column. Look across at the person who's observing you. Show them the pulse oximeter reading. And if you haven't already done it, I want you to go to item number three, sign your name. Three Connor's on. Okay, Connor said, I'm not signing my name. I've had enough of this. Good deal.
And Andre look, or Derek looks like a Smurf berry. <laughs> nice and blue. Derek's blue. Hey, Derek, are you a pilot? Okay, good. Can you do me a favor and stick your hands out in front of you like this? Now, if I say climb, I want you to lift your hands up like you're climbing. Climb. Go ahead. Straight and level. Climb. Straight and level. Descend. Straight and level. Climbing a right turn. Level off. Yeah, the other right, huh? Okay. And we are coming up on the five-minute point, so I want everybody to go ahead and put your oxygen mask on now. Let's go, Mask guys. is off. Put it on. Come on, Victor. Andre, you go. play the game. Put your mask on. Yeah, mask on. That thing's going to save your life. Remember to slow your breathing rate down. After you get the mask on your face, control that rate and depth of breathing. Allow the symptoms of hypoxia to go away. Now, people on Bob's side, you guys can put your pulse oximeters on your finger of your non-writing hand while the folks on Victor's side are catching up and feeling back to normal here. And I'm going to check with you guys in just a moment to make sure that that is actually the uh, case. Let me have everybody take your worksheet, the top sheet on your clipboard, and flip it over so you're looking at the back side of it or the opposite side of the one you were looking at. And let me start up here. Victor, you feeling back to normal? Yes, sir. All right. Connor, how about you? Feeling good? Oh, say again? Yes. Good. Okay. Uh, Alex? Good. All right. Derek? Okay. Thumbs up will work if you need to. Okay. Good. Andre? Yes, sir. All right. Good. And Dave? I'm good. All right. So the folks on uh, Victor's side here, if you take that pulse oximeter off, put it back on the console, you won't need it any at any more now. I mean, because you're back on oxygen, you should have 100% oxygen percentage reading or pretty darn close to it. Uh, so folks on... Bob's side are going to get to experience hypoxia now, and uh, everybody should have a pulse oximeter reading. No, nope, he doesn't have one. We'll get that fixed. We want you to be able to see the physiological response of hypoxia. And again, the same rules apply for Bob's side as it was for uh, Victor's side. You guys are going to get to experience hypoxia when you've got enough, uh, whether it's the number of symptoms, the uh, ability or inability to do simple tasks, uh, whatever it is that, that tells you it's time to put the mask on, we want you to be able to do it for yourself. All right, so everybody on Bob's side ready to experience some hypoxia. Thumbs up if you are. All right, good deal. Then I might count backwards from three. We'll get her going. Three, two, one, mask off. Take the mask off. Hanging out there on a the hose in front of you. Now, before you get started, I want you to do this, kind of the same thing these guys over here did. I want, the, I want you to look across at the person who's observing you. See what they look like. Now, actually, we're letting them see what you look like. That's a good thing there. Now, I want you to look at their name tag, especially the last name. See how easy it is or not so easy it is to focus on it. Look at the color chart. See how that is. Can you make out those colors? Are they bright? Are they distinguishable? Now, I want you to pucker up and give me a standard whistle like you're trying to, I want to be able to hear you out here. Very quiet in there, isn't it? Okay, a little lack of air resistance make it kind of hard to be able to, uh, to whistle. So just something special you guys got to do. Now, at this point, what I'm going to have you do is go ahead and start working on the worksheet. You can pick anywhere you want to start, whether it's the uh, crossword puzzle, the maze, or the math problems, and uh, go ahead and begin uh, working on that. Now, at this point, we are coming up to the one-minute point. So, Bob's side, if you'll drop down to... Uh, Item number four, the one-minute column, put a check mark or X next to the uh, symptoms of hypoxia you're currently feeling, and then uh, jot your pulse oximeter reading at the bottom of that column. When you're done, go ahead and show the pulse oximeter to the person across from you. Look at your visual uh, target you chose earlier and see whether your visual acuity or color perception is being affected. Look at the name tags. Look at the color charts. And then you can go back to the worksheet and continue on where you were or wherever you think you are were. Okay, on Victor's side, you guys are looking at those signs of hypoxia that these people might demonstrate. You know, changes in uh, breathing rate, uh, skin color, uh, focus ability, uh, whatever it is you see them doing that tells you they're hypoxic, make sure you're jotting it down so you can tell them all about it later on. And with that, we are coming into the two-minute point. So Bob's side, if you'll go down to item number four, the second column. I want you to put your pulse oximeter reading at the bottom of that column. Then I want you to go ahead and put an X or check mark next to any symptom that you're feeling right now. And when you're done with that, I want you to show that pulse oximeter to the person across from you while you check out your vision and see if it's easier or hard or the same as it was before, trying to change your field of uh, your focal depth or looking at something of color. 
And, uh, Bob, how many symptoms you got? Just give me a show of fingers. Got three. Okay. How about you, Ryan? Three also. Gee, how many you got? Two. Uh, let's see. Steve, how many symptoms you got? Two. Uh, let's see. Jameson? Three. And Austin? Got three. All right. So, you see, everybody's got a little few symptoms to work on. And, again, when it's recognizable enough that you want to put your mask on, Stephen's got his mask on. That's exactly what we want you to do is be able to fix the problem for yourself. Okay. We are coming into the three-minute point. So on Bob's side, if you're uh, still off oxygen, I want you to go down to the uh, center column on item four. And I want you to go ahead and put an X next to the symptoms of hypoxia you're feeling at this point. Jot your pulse oximeter reading down and then check your vision out. See if it's being affected while you're showing your pulse oximeter to the uh, person across from you. And you can see for the folks on Victor's side how these guys start slowing down just a little bit. They get a little sluggish. And that's kind of one of those signs of uh, hypoxia that you can look for in someone. Ryan might be a good uh, one to try. Ryan's a good one to try. Ryan, are you pilot? You good with math? Okay. You ta you're taking off from your home field. Repeat that to Don for me. I took off from my home field. Not Number nine. Talk to us. Okay. Okay. Uh, you flew for 45 minutes. Tell, tell Don you flew for 45 minutes. How many of each animal did Moses put on the ark? Pick a number, write it on your paper anywhere and circle it. And then we're now at the four minute point. So at this point, I want you to go ahead, item number four, put a check mark next to any symptom you're feeling of hypoxia. Jot your oxygen saturation and pulse rate down. Show that pulse oximeter to the person across from you. Again, the goal is for you to recognize hypoxia, take care of it when you feel the need. Don't go too far because going too far is a bad thing. Okay. Roger that. Okay, Ryan's back on. Guy's going back on. And Austin's sitting at 67. Going Austin's going to get it out. He's at 68, 67. Okay. Hey, Austin, can you do me a favor? Can you count backwards from 100 by 7s, like 193? So JR can hear you. And that last number you just said, I want you to write it down next to your maze, circle it, and then go ahead and put your mask on. He went 97, 93, so pretty close. Okay. So go ahead and put your mask on now. We're at the five-minute point. And again, the big thing is once you get that oxygen mask on, you want to slow your breathing rate down. So you don't go from one form of hypoxia to another. And then once everything all settles out, which it does pretty quickly, a few breaths, you start feeling normal. And within 30 to 60 seconds, everything feels back to completely normal. And if that's the case, I'm just going to check in with you, make sure that that is working for you. And at this point, you guys can flip your white switches up to the 100% uh, setting. So, Bob, give me a thumbs up if you're feeling back to normal. Bob's good. Uh, Ryan, how about you? Good deal. Gee, feeling all right? Steve? Uh, Jameson and Austin. Good. All right, good deal. Now, what I want to have everybody do is flip your worksheet over, uh, and this will be for Victor's side, so that you can see the front side of your worksheet. For everybody, I want you to go down to item number four and circle the strongest symptom that you felt. One of those that you put an X next to felt strongest to you than anything else. I want you to circle that one, and then I want you to put your pencil back on your clipboard, put your clipboard up, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, okay? So, once you're done... And with Don, we're ready for a descent. He's okay. Always He's always ready. All right. So we are heading on down towards 18,000 feet. And what we're going to do at this point is we are going to dim the lights down when we get to 22,000 feet to a kind of a nighttime illumination. So it won't be real bright inside there. Maybe even be just a little bit on the dark side. Uh, and what we're going to do when that happens, when lights go down, I want you to take your oxygen mask off and hang it on the hose in front of you. So we are on descent. You won't have the pressure changes happening here as much as they're going to as we get down below 10,000 feet. But do stay ahead of your ears and sinuses. Do any uh, air clearing stuff that you need to do uh, as you need to do it. Okay. Now once we get to, once the lights go out or go down to a dim uh, nighttime illumination, which should happen right here in a couple of seconds. What I want you to do is just simply go ahead, take your mask off, hang out in the hose in front of you, 
and uh, we're going to start a five minute timer here. As we're doing this, we're also going to descend down to 18,000 feet. Okay. Now, as we descend down to 18,000 feet, the time of useful consciousness gets better. It was only three to five minutes at 25,000 feet. As we get down to 18,000 feet, it's going to get to about 20 to 30 minutes. So I don't expect anybody to get hypoxic like before. So go ahead, remove your oxygen mask at this point, hang it on the hose in front of you. And we have started our time here. And again, I don't expect anybody to get any symptoms of hypoxia like what you had at 25,000 feet. But if you do have symptoms come on that strongly, I want you to go ahead and put your oxygen mask on for yourself. Typically it doesn't happen, but if it does, you know, don't be afraid to use the oxygen mask. It's just like any, it's just like the oxygen mask you have in your airplane. Is it required to be used below 12.5? No. Can you use it? Yes. So I want you to choose to use it here if you feel the need. Now what's happening at this point is you are getting to experience a little bit of a uh, low-grade hypoxia. So how is this going to affect you? Well, possibly it's going to affect your vision. Maybe something like what would happen if you were flying in an unpressurized airplane at, say, five to 6,000 feet above your normal field elevation at night. It, you know, it's not required for you to use supplemental oxygen. You probably don't even use it. But what we're going to show you is the benefit of possibly using it during those critical phases of flight. So during this time, you're experiencing somewhat of a uh, hypoxic uh, or tug of war, if you will, in that uh, what's happening is your eyes are dark adapting. And as your eyes are dark adapting, which is going to take typically about, well, within about the first five minutes, you get some really good, uh, you know, improvement kind of like when you walk into a, um, a movie theater at night and you know you walked in the movie theater it's dark the movies already started and you kind of have to wait for your eyes to adjust a little bit so you can see the seats and don't sit in somebody's lap well that's kind of what's happening here and that's what you'll find happening within that first five minutes now the rest of the dark adaptation takes about oh, somewhere between 30 and 45 minutes to uh, to complete but uh, so you may notice that your vision is getting better, your color perception is getting better. But at the same time, because you're in an oxygen-deprived environment, what's going to happen is that your eyes may be being robbed of enough oxygen to negatively impact your visual acuity or color perception. So during this little physiological tug-of-war that you're dealing with, we'll let you see if you notice anything at all that uh, might indicate that this recommendation that CAMI has of using supplemental oxygen at, at altitudes as low as 6,000 feet could really be a benefit to you. you all right? Yep. All right, and we've been, you've been off of uh, oxygen uh, for about two and a half minutes now, so what I want you to do is look down next to your seat and you'll find some colored charts, kind of like the ones that are up on the wall, only a little bit bigger. And uh, so I want you to go ahead and grab those. Hold them at normal reading distance, whatever that is for you. For us old guys, it's usually the guy across the hall has to hold it for me. But, uh, you know, try to find a good, decent reading distance where you'd be reading a book or a magazine or something like that. And I want you to hold this card at that level the entire time. Now, I want you to look at this chart. Look at the color wheel side of it. First off, can you see the colors? Are they distinguishable from each other? Are they very vivid? Are they dull down? Look at the center of the card. There's a little phrase there, something to the effect of uh, focus your eyes here and see the uh, Z's disappear. Pick the smallest word that you can make out, focus on it, and see if your peripheral vision is being affected. Can you see the letters in the periphery while staring at the center of the card at that word you chose? Once you've done that, I'd like you to take the card, rotate it over to the back side. And on the back side, keeping the card at the same distance, there is a visual acuity chart. Make a mental note of the line that you can read the clearest. Then when you're done with that, look down at the bottom of that card and you'll see some icons that you might find on the sectional. Can you make them out? Are they easily distinguishable? Now when you're done with that, I want you to go ahead and take the card, put it face down or color side up rather in your lap and we'll take it out and look at it in just a few moments. Now we're doing this demonstration at 18,000 feet. Raise your hand if you actually fly an airplane at 18,000 feet without an oxygen mask. No, it's not authorized, right? I can't do that. I would admit to it in front of the FAA if I did. But here's the deal. Why are we doing this at 18,000 feet when I was talking about being 6,000 feet above field elevation? Well, at 6,000 feet, it's just going to take a little bit longer. So we're accelerating the process of creating a little bit of a hypoxic environment that you may be having for yourself. You may just not realize it. 
your nighttime vision isn't as good, your color perception isn't as good. We get used to that fact and we don't realize how much of a benefit oxygen can actually play in our abilities to see. So what I want you to do at this point is go ahead and take the color chart back up, hold it at the reading distance you had, and again, look at the colors. How bright are they? How distinguishable are they? Look at the center of the card. Can you still see the Z's in the periphery? You can hear the speaker pretty good, Eric, if you want to use that instead of the headsets. Okay, good deal. Go ahead, flip the card over to the back side, look at the visual acuity chart, make a mental note of how well you're able to see now, and also look at the icons that you might find from the uh, sectional. Then I want you to go ahead and turn the card back over to the uh, color wheel side, and I'm going to have you grab your oxygen mask at this point. Now, while holding the card at normal reading distance, I'm going to have you put your oxygen mask on in just a moment here. If your headset gets in the way, knock it off. It's okay. Like GR says, you'll be able to hear through the speakers and you can put the headset on later. I want you to focus on the card while you put the oxygen mask on and then take about two to three deep breaths of oxygen while you focus on the card and then resume normal breathing. Go ahead, do that now. So mask on, focus on the card, take two to three deep breaths of oxygen while focusing on the card. Resume normal breathing and see what you see or don't see. So the blind carpenter has picked up his hammer and saw. Now what I want you to do is go ahead and uh, focus on the center of the card. Can you see the Z's in the periphery? Look at the colors. How distinguishable are they from each other? Now once you rotate the card over to the back side, look at the visual acuity chart. Make a note of where you can read now. Are the lines that you're able to read now smaller than the ones you were able to read earlier? If you look at the sectional at the, uh, or the icons you'd find on a sectional, are they clearer, more easy to see? And whatever you're going to see, you've probably already seen it by now, so if you will direct your attention down towards the floor, we're going to turn the lights up, so watch your eyes, it'll be kind of a little bit bright. And you can go ahead and take that card and put it back where you originally found it. And if you have your headset down at this point, go ahead and put your headset up because it's going to get a little bit louder as we descend. And you may want to be able to hear just a wee bit better. Especially since this is the point where we're going to be doing a little bit of chatting and talking together. Okay, so uh, Don, ready for descent? Okay, Don's asleep up there. <laughs> Okay, with that, we are on descent then. All right, so this is where the pressure change is going to happen more as we get down below 10,000 feet. Typical time from uh, where we are to, to ground level is about six minutes, so do make sure you stay ahead of the uh, ears and sinuses. Do those ear clearings as you need to. And uh, if you should happen to need us to slow down, remember you can give us that signal.